CataractCoach.com, look at the pictures. We have a wrinkling of the anterior lens capsule. When we're aphakic, the rexus is round, but with the IOL, it looks oval. Why is that? Let me show you this case. We're going to fast forward through most of the case to get to just the critical points. So there's our main incision made with our diamond keratome. And now we're going to create the capsule rexus. Watch carefully. We'll put our forceps in the eye and look what happens when we attempt to puncture the lens capsule. Wrinkling, a lot of wrinkling. It's tough to puncture. We poke it again, it takes three or four tries just to puncture the lens capsule. Now as we tear the rexus, it looks okay and there seems to be sufficient support. But of course the zonules are globally loose. Not focally, there's no prior trauma. They're all just a bit loose. The patient doesn't have pseudoxfoliation, but the patient is quite elderly. So we're creating our capsule rexus, and there is enough tension in the zonules to hold the lens still, and so we can achieve this round capsule rexus. So they're focally normal in all the different spots. There is no trauma, but globally, the zonules are all a bit on the weak side. So we created a nice round capsule rexus. We'll do some hydro dissection and hydro delineation. The goal here for me is to get the lens out of the capsular bag. So slow and steady with the hydro dissection with a sufficiently large capsular axis, there's the nucleus. Let's hydro delineate, there we go. We're gonna chop this above and outside the capsular bag because I think it'll put less stress on the capsular bag. So injecting more dispersive viscoelastic to protect the cornea, we'll put our phaco probe in the eye and do a variant of phaco chop. Now, I do like this lens tilted like this out of the capsule bag. I think there's much less stress on the capsule and on the zonules as compared to doing a divide and conquer technique or even a chop in the bag. So there's our first chop. We have two halves. Each hemi-nucleus can then be emulsified. And let's fast forward. Here's the end of the case. We're removing the cortex. Watch carefully. Now, if we have very bad zonules, as we pull the cortex, the rexus edge will move. And here, the rexus edge looks pretty stable. It's still a round rexus that looks okay. So we didn't encounter too much difficulty in doing the cortex removal. Fill the capsular bag now with the cohesive viscoelastic. There it is. Let's put a little more in to get a nice, good, solid fill of viscoelastic. And we can see we still have our round capsular rexus nicely centered, intact, and it's looks pretty round. We're now going to implant the IOL. The lens is a single piece acrylic lens. We're going to place it in the capsule bag. You can put other lenses if you want. A three-piece lens, you can use a sulcus lens, whatever. But let's look at this case. We've got single piece acrylic lens going in the capsule bag. Nice and easy. You'll notice this is a toric lens. This patient has a high degree of coinal astigmatism and the toric lens is important in that regard. So nice and easy, get the lens completely in the capsule bag. Let's rotate the lens to the appropriate position, nice and slowly. We get the lens rotated clockwise to where we want it. Now look at the rexus. Even having viscoelastic in the eye, it's a little bit oval shaped now. It's not quite as round as it was before. And this is of course due to the outward force of the haptics and the presence of the looser zonules. So now, here comes the IA probe. Let's remove our viscoelastic. Actually, prior to that, let's seal the incision. So just to make sure we have good stability here, we don't want to flatten out the AC. We'll seal the incision first. Now look at the rexus, and that's still with viscoelastic. So let's go in the eye, let's remove our viscoelastic. Incision's a little tighter because we already hydrated it. So removing viscoelastic. I'm debating whether or not to go behind the lens, and since that big wad just came forward, I think we're okay, let's not go behind it. And now sealing up the incision again, inflating the anterior chamber, we can verify our toric lens position, and the rexus is very oval. Hmm, the eyeball seems very stable. What should you do here? And my question to you, and I'd love to see your responses in the comment section, do you put in a capsule tension ring or other device? Or do you leave well enough alone in this 90-year-old lady? So good question to ask, and I look forward to reading your answers.
Thank you for watching.